Hi guys, welcome to online learning with prep class. I am Tutor Chima. Hmm? Okay, um, I'm a chemistry tutor and I'm going to be anchoring today's section. In today's section, we are going to be looking at jam chemistry for the year 2017. We've solved lots and lots of past questions. We've solved the jam chemistry 2020, 2019, 2018, and now we are on jam chemistry 2017. If you've not seen any of our videos, my dear, you are really, 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 really missing big time. I urge you to go back look through our channels again we have lots and lots of educational materials like you like this for that we have lots and lots of educational materials like this that will really help you in your examination on this chart by the time you go through our past question i don't think there's any question you will see again in your jam or any other uh examination on chemistry even in this work it's very the obj aspect that you'll not be able to blast and destroy so we've done so much and today is a fresh start on solving this past uh, question on the jam chemistry 2017 so because the fresh starts i'm going to be looking at questions number one to five we saw five questions per video so in the next section i'll be looking at questions six to ten just like that mm -hmm. All right, guys, before we proceed, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our videos. After watching this video, you can drop one or two questions on the comment section. Mm -hmm. If you look below there, you will see a notification icon. Click that icon and activate it. When you do so, you'll be, getting, you'll be the first to be notified whenever we have educational content like this on our channel. You can be kind enough to share our videos so that it's going to reach as much viewers as possible. So, all right, guys, enough of the talking. Let us go down to business. Let us go down to business by solving past questions on jam chemistry for the year, year 2017. A fresh start. So, we're looking at questions one to five. Question number one says The flame used by welders in cutting metals is the flame used by welders in cutting metals is, is it butane gas flame? Is it acetylene flame? Is it kerosene flame? Is it oxy acetylene flame? I think the answer there is oxy acetylene flame. Mm, okay. So, the flame used by welders in cutting metals is the flame used by welders in cutting metals is is it butane gas flame? Is it acetylene flame? Is it kerosene flame? Is it oxy acetylene flame? Now, oxygen combines with ethylene to produce oxy ethylene flame, which is used to cut through metals like steel. So, this oxy ethylene flame, or we can call it oxy acetylene flame, is used to cut metals. It's used by welders to cut metals. So. The flame that is used is oxyethylene flame or oxyacetylene flame. Acetylene ethylene is the same thing. So the answer is oxyacetylene flame or oxyethylene flame. D. Number two, at room temperature, 300 Kelvin in figure one, they're asking us to analyze this graph. A, Y is twice as soluble as X. Y is twice as soluble as X is twice as soluble as Y. X and Y are soluble to the same extent. X is three times as soluble as Y. Now, looking at this graph, you can see that solubility is plotted against temperature. So, when the graph is increasing this way, this is increasing solubility. When it's increasing this way, this is increasing temperature. You know that solubility varies with temperature. Increase in temperature increases the rate of what solubility mm -hmm. so the higher the temperature the higher the substance will dissolve now this curve here is for x and 
this other curve that goes this way is for y. I'm going to use this one to analyze this graph. Now, if you look here, you'll see that x is increasing steadily. The solubility of x is increasing steadily with temperature. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. You can see that from here, it increases to here. So as it's going up like this, solubility is increasing. And as it's going this way, temperature is increasing. Mm -hmm. You can see that x, as, as, this, as the temperature is increasing, the solubility of x is increasing. Mm -hmm. So you see at this point now, at this point, it's around, let's say, this is 60, 90, is that, is that 80, 70, 80, 90? Okay, that's 80, 80, 90. So this side should be around, let's say, this is uh, 88. This side is 88. And this side is 363 Kelvin. So X is increasing steadily. The solubility is, as the solubility is increasing, look at the level of the solubility, 88. Temperature is increasing. So increase in solubility, increase in temperature. So you can see that X, the solubility of X is increasing steadily with an increase in temperature. Mm? That's for X. Solubility of X is increasing steadily with an increase in temperature. Now let us look at Y. Let's look at Y. For Y, solubility was increasing steadily with an increase in temperature till you get to this point. Mm -hmm. It was first of all increasing, get to this point, then the rate of increase in solubility with temperature was not that much. You can see that the rate of solubility of Y, that's the increase in solubility of Y with that of temperature, is not as much as that of X. X is increasing steadily with temperature, but a a Y is increasing slightly with an increase in temperature. So the increase in the solubility is not as much with an increase in temperature. So if you analyze these two curves well, you see that, well, the solubility of X is higher than Y. Now I'm sure. Because solubility is, look at solubility, this thing here is around 88. Y on here is around 62 or so. So you know that the solubility of X is what? Higher. You know, than that of y. So x will be x higher than y. That's number. Then number two is let us now see y is twice as soluble as x. This option is off. X is twice as soluble as y. This option is somehow close. Now let's see the next one. X and y are, this, are soluble at the same extent. They are not as soluble at the same extent. I see that x increases. So the of x increases steadily, but y does not increase that much as x is. So, so the of x is higher than y so they are not soluble to the same extent x is three times as soluble as y no no you see that the difference between these two is not is high yes but it's not so much as that of three times so our best option here is x is twice as soluble as y so if you must go with any option the best option here is that x is twice as soluble as y so the correct option is x is twice as soluble as y number three Tetrazobin 6 acid is prepared using the chemical reaction SO3 plus water to give H2SO4. Given the heat of formation for SO3 gas, which is this one, water, which is this, and H2SO4 as this, that's minus 9, 395 joule per mole, that's the heat of formation of so for, for, so for 6 oxide, SO3 is so also like. So minus 395 kilojoule per mole, that's heat of formation of sulfur 6 oxide, minus 286 kilojoule per mole, heat of formation of water, and minus 811 kilojoule per mole, heat of formation of sulfuric acid, respectively. Okay. The enthalpy change accompanying this reaction is so they're asking us to find the enthalpy change. Is it minus 1032 kilojoule? Is it minus 130 kilojoule? Is it plus 130 kilojoule? Is it plus 1032 kilojoule? Now, heat of formation, or you can say change in heat, since they're asking us to find the enthalpy change, that's I use delta H to represent the change in heat. So, at the enthalpy change, delta H equals heat of formation of products 
minus heat of formation of reactant. So that's how we do it. Formation minus reactant. And product minus reactant. So heat of formation of products minus heat of formation of reactant. So the upper heat becomes what is heat of formation of the product? The product is H2SO4. And this heat of formation is minus 811 kilojoule per mole. So I'll bring it here minus 811 kilojoule per mole. So minus heat of formation of reactant. So that becomes minus open bracket. Reactants are so for scissors I use minus 395. So bring down your minus 395 and minus 286. Bring down your minus 286. So that becomes minus 811 minus, combine these two, minus this minus, this will give me minus 681. Mm -hmm. So minus 811 minus times minus, because this bracket here means a multiplication, minus times minus becomes what plus. So minus 811 plus 681. So your change, your entropy change that I becomes minus 130 joule per mole, or kilojoule per mole. I'm supposed to put a K here. Okay, minus 130 is the answer. Minus 130 kilojoule per mole. Mm -hmm. So that's the correct answer. Minus 130. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Just um, heat of formation of products minus that of the reactant. As simple as that. Four. In two separate experiments, 0.36 gram and 0.7 gram of chlorine combined with the metal X to give Y and Z. An analysis showed that Y and Z contain 0.20 gram and 0.40 of X, respectively. The data above represents the law of is the law that says that all pure sample of a chemical, particular chemical compound contains similar elements combined in the same proportion by mass. The same proportion, if you look at this, this divided by this can give us two. This divided by this is close to mm, the, same, the same proportion. 0 point this divided by 0 point 0.36 will give us 2. 0 point 0.4 divided by 0 point 0.2 will give us 2. Mm -hmm. 2 is to 2. So the same proportion by mass, and that law is law of constant composition. So the answer is constant composition, law of constant composition. Mm -hmm. Number 5. If an element x of atomic number z and mass number y is irrad irradiated, that is, undergoes radiation by an intense concentration of neurons. The relevant nuclear equation is, so you don't even need much, just look at this four equation and look for the one that is balanced and that will give you your answer. You can see that neuron is mass number one, atomic number zero for all of them, okay? So what will now give you your correct answer is a balanced equation. So in this case, x, y, z plus 1, 0. So this is supposed to give me, <coughs> this is supposed to give me y plus 1 because the reactant, the product side must be equal to the reactant side. So y plus 1, this is supposed to give me y plus 1, but I'm having y minus 1 here. y minus 1 cannot give me this 2. And here, z and 0, this is supposed to be z plus z. Uh, just Z, just Z. So option A will not fly. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be Y plus 1, and there's a mass number Y plus 1, atomic number Z, but it's not so. Option A will not fly. Option B, so like I said, Y plus 1, atomic number Z plus 0, Z. So Y plus 1, Z. B will fly because Y plus 1, this is Y plus 1, we be something as this to Z uh, plus 0 is Z. So B will fly. Let's see the rest. C, C, Y plus 1. They put only Y here to not go. This is supposed to be Y plus 1, but only Y is here. Z, Z, they put Z plus 1. This will not fly. D, Y plus 1. Okay, they put Y plus 1 here. Z and Z, they put Z minus 1. Z minus 1 is not equal to Z. So out of all of them, only B will fly because only B is balanced. Y plus 1, that's Y plus 1. Z plus zero is Z. So the correct option there. So your correct answer there is B. Mm -hmm. So B is your best choice. All right, guys, we've come to the end of today's section of Learning with Prep Class where we looked at past questions on Jam 2017. We solved questions 1 to 5. That's past questions on Jam Chemistry for the year 2017. We solved questions 1 to 5. So if you look below here, you see a link. I urge you to type this link on your browser when you do so it's going to take you straight to our WhatsApp group 
So when you join us on WhatsApp, you get updates, you get infos on the latest content we have on our channels. Mm -hmm. So till you see my video once again, I still remain Tutor Chima, third class tutor on chemistry. I teach chemistry and I teach biology. Uh, I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time.